welcome inside the WOSN studio. Time for another installment of Press Row and joined by some of the press in the Lima area right now. Aaron Allegedly. Matthews. Allegedly. <laughs> Aaron Matthews, Todd Walker, Mark Kutz, I'm Matt Finkel. Week two, high school football brought about some interesting weather delays and issues that were eventually sorted out on Saturday. I mean, we're all in favor of safety. We understand why yes. the lightning delay exists, but there's technology out there that allows you to understand where the lightning really is. And maybe some of those games were called a little bit too prematurely based on where the actual storm was at. Yeah, it, it's just so frustrating with the actual technology that you can use, that uh, golf courses use. Uh, and really, you didn't have to be a weather savant to know. The lightning was literally 50 miles away. And yeah, you can see light in the sky. It's not lightning. So we all had to come back on Saturday. It is what it is. Hopefully well, there's a Grove City didn't have to come back on Saturday <laughs> up at Finley. Well, or Mansfield Senior didn't have Saturday. to host St. Lima Senior. And... Marion Local didn't have to return to Detroit, the Detroit yeah. area. I mean, some games. of the games were called, particularly the games that were already blowouts, but you, you, you had that situation where Grove City was playing Finley up in Finley. Grove City is down southwest side of Columbus. They didn't want to go from Finley all the way back down to Grove City and back up to Finley the next day. So they waited, and they finished that game about 1.30 in the morning on Saturday. Bishop Harley wanted to do the similar thing at Coldwater, finally reached the point and said, we just can't do that. So, I mean, here we are talking about a team sitting around waiting four hours and playing a game at one in the morning as being the right decision to be made last Saturday. Guys, in Kansas, they have six-man football. And if six-man football state can have their officials carry these lightning micrometers or whatever they want to call them, these things that tell you how far the lightning is, OHSA, come on, guys, step your game up. Let's go. But it was interesting to hear some of these stories, the case in point in Defiance, where my son was, who's a sophomore at Elida in the band. They were getting off the bus. Here comes the lightning. Get back on the bus, kids. <laughs> yeah, and it's not so much that it's irritating to me because nobody cares about me. I'm fine with that. It, it's inconvenient <laughs> I care for, a little bit, but <laughs> I appreciate that. It's so inconvenient for all the fans, yeah. not yeah. to mention the extra cost yeah. Oh, yeah. for the traveling teams, especially on the weeks where you may have one of those long trips, like somebody in the Northwest Conference going to Paulding or something like that, not to mention those Columbus schools Mark was talking about here early in the season. If the technology exists, we've got to use it and get rid of these rule of thumb. If you can see it or hear it, it could hit you, blah, blah, blah. We've got a phone with an app on it. Let's use it. Another thing, too, guys, is this, what it did to the schedules of some of these locations, taking point Spartan mm -hmm. Stadium, right. where there was scheduled a freshman football game and a JV football game with Mansfield Senior, Lima Senior. There was junior varsity soccer, which why they have junior varsity soccer is beyond me. No, so that's so they can get ready for varsity soccer. <laughs> to be one and done regardless. <laughs> they had that, and then you have to turn around now and add, you know, squeeze in a football game to continue. Half a football game. Yeah, half, right. not, yeah. technically not even half right. of a football game, depending on where the game was picked up on, but it made for uh, traffic logisticals may, were compromised some, but I mean, they were able to, different places were able to get in the stuff that they needed to get in. OG didn't have a kicker on Saturday. That's right. Didn't need him though when they turned around and uh, woke well, up and, and on I, Saturday. I think that brings Friday. up another point. I mean, OG was trailing when the lightning hit on Friday and they came out Saturday morning and well, they struck lightning as they converted some turnover from Van Wert and took the lead in that game. Some coaches had an agreement in place where you could look at film at Friday night into Saturday morning. Other coaches, you couldn't. Obviously, some coaches took uh, advantage of that break and had a much different outcome from what they were having on Friday night. Todd Schulte, Delphi St. John's, prime example of what they did. They made some excellent adjustments. They forced turnovers there in that second in day two of their matchup uh, with LCC at the stadium. And, uh, I mean, that right there was a huge difference just based on – you know, what they were able to see. And, you know, the coaches, they have – how it works is that they can agree to, you know, watch the film. But if not, they've got to give their – they've got to turn their cameras over. So neither team does go ahead and watch it. They've got to give it to the, one of the officials, and they have to keep it in safe place for overnight. But uh, 
I yeah. think they were they did the smart thing watching that film, regardless just, of who which game it was. Speaking of the inconvenience that you brought up, Todd, I know Kenton, Matty Mock was playing in Toledo. Yep. Kenton was supposed to go and watch Matty there, play. There, there are a lot of folks who bought numerous tickets for that Toledo Missouri game that could not use them because. Well, the tickets were going to be used for people who now had to play in the Toledo or in the Wapakoneta Kenton football game. So, I mean, you know, nothing you can do there. Your hands are tied, but absolutely, there were some folks in Kenton mm -hmm. that were quite disappointed. They wanted to go up to Toledo to see Maddie play. Yeah, Maddie made mention of that and was disappointed, but again, what can you do? Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. One of the games that didn't get interrupted was Lima Senior, Mansfield Senior. Lima Senior takes on Piqua this week. Are these true, two true contenders or pretenders at this point? 2-0 for Lima Senior coming in. Well, it'd be, it would be nice to know that. I don't know that we really know that yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a, a good matchup for both of them, though, to get some more definition. Uh, Pick was beating a couple teams that generally are considered pretty good teams. Right. Uh, Lima Senior beat up on Marion Harding, who we pretty much know is not very good. But Mansfield Senior was a playoff team last year, although they're reloading. So I think this is a good matchup with two teams that are 2-0, and think they're pretty good. Uh, may be, may not be. Uh, maybe both of them are pretty good and we get a heck of a game Friday night. In my uh, column for 419sports.com this week, I, I legitimized Lima Senior. I said, right now, yes, they are legit. Uh, what they did to Mansfield Senior going over there winning for like the first time since like 1916 or whatever year it was that a Lima team had beaten Mansfield Senior to do it with a backup quarterback like they did with Elias Wright. And we'll see this week whether it's him or Glover back under center who are in the shotgun, I should say, uh, with uh, Lima Sr. Uh, coming off of a shoulder injury it remains to be seen at this point. But uh, I think this is an excellent test for the Spartans with Piqua coming in. And their coach, Bill Neese, has ties to the Lima mm -hmm. area. Right. Uh, Lima Central Catholic graduate, a member of the LCC Hall of Fame for his athletic achievements as well. And uh, should be a very good game for both teams, I think. And I believe that game is on... WSN. Absolutely. That'll be uh, seen at 7 o'clock Saturday night WOSN. It's been a long time since Lima Senior has won their first three games of a season because if you go back to, was it 04 they started 3-0, and but yes. that second game was a forfeited game. Yeah, I, th I think it might even be 1989. I think it's the last time they were 3-0. and Folks forget their 96 title year. They did lose a game mm -hmm. during the regular season. So uh, good luck to the Spartans, and I think this is a good matchup. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and they've got Lyles on the ground averaging 10 yards a carry. That's something they look to keep up as they move on, and if they can get to 3-0, and it could, they could be on their way. Big injury news this week. Brody Hoyne went down with a knee injury in the first half of that Coldwater-Bishop-Hartley game. Obviously, the game was finished on Saturday. Brody did not play. The diagnosis was a strained MCL in his right knee, and he could be out two to three weeks. So Ken... Coldwater, who has a very tough upcoming max schedule starting this week, can they survive without their senior star quarterback? Well, certainly you look at what they did without hoing against Bishop Hartley, where they had the lead when that game got suspended, came back on Saturday afternoon, finished the game up, expanded that lead. You got Jack Hemelgarn at quarterback now. We saw him over the summer at the Maria Stein yeah. Country Fest. Looked pretty good in that quarterback challenge. But as I tweeted Saturday afternoon, Coldwater is more than just a one-person team. They're not just Brody Hoying. They've got the talent. It's going to be a good test for them this week because I think this Minster team has, has proven itself the first couple weeks that they're one of the better teams in the MAC. Guys, if you want to, you know, look at last year when Adam Berkey went down for Marion Local back at what was it, week seven? Mm -hmm. I think it was is when he got injured and was out. And, you know, they just stepped right in, you know, next man up, play ball. I think it's going to be a similar situation at Coldwater. It's a mindset thing in Coldwater. We don't rebuild. We reload. Next man up, steps in, and we'll do, you know, he'll do an admirable job. And I think that'll be the case here. They'll keep the seat warm and everything will be fine when Hoying returns in a couple weeks. But they do have a nice stretch in the next three weeks, especially with Coach Stokes and Minster on Friday. Yeah, they got St. Henry after that, yep. Anna Parkway, and then Marion Locals, I think, like four weeks away. Yep. Uh, it's clear that they're better with Brody Sure, Hoy. absolutely. Now, does that mean they can't win the games in the interim until he comes back? Of course not. But uh, if you want to beat them, now would probably be the time you'd want to try <laughs> it uh, when he's not playing. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's definitely a fair assessment. Hemelgarn can throw, though. He had some nice long completions, and, and, and then, then we'll use post on the ground a little more. Most surprising start of the high school football season? I think this is a good question. What, what do you guys think is the most surprising? I, I look at Spencerville. I know we talked about Spencerville a lot last week, but to post back-to-back -back shutouts, to, to shut out a Lipstick and an Ada offense, which in the years past, Ada certainly has been extremely prolific offensively. You put up back-to-back -back shutouts. 
That uh, I, I think I don't I I don't know if a two zero start for Spencerville is surprising. The shutouts I think back to back shutouts are surprising. The ninety three nothing is surprising. Right. Yeah. How well how they've done it is surprising. My biggest surprise is Delphi St. John's coming out of the shoot at two and zero. A win in overtime over Elida in week one, and then turning a week one win into a week two win uh, against LCC. And people have said. Uh, you know, including Schulte, you know, this this isn't your mom and dad's St. John's team. That it's not power, your older brother's St. John's older team. Brother, yeah, or cousin. It's not their St. John's team where they were known for that power running game where you'd have that power with the quarterback lead, you know, that they would use. And that's not in the playbook right now. They're going pistol, single back. They'll go three, three, four wide. They'll go five wide if they need to. And they're just getting the job done, and they are playing some very good football. Their defense was incredible, I thought, in uh, day two of their matchup with LCC. Yeah, I, I was going to go with St. John's as well, just because we had heard they would be down, and their early schedule was not conducive to being 2-0, and and yet here they are, 2-0. and So we talked about how you can't write them off early in the season. They'll probably get better as the season goes on. But, hey, now they're 2-0. and So last year they finished strong. You finish, they'll figure they'll do that again this year. Uh, good for the Jays, that 2-0 and start. Yeah, home this week for Versailles should be yes. a good test. Yes. How about uh, Columbus Grove is 2-0 and after a 2-8 and season last year. Close win over That's PG. A good one too. And then uh, who did they defeat this Alan past East. week? Allen East in a big victory, right. And then also on the other side of the coin, I was looking at Kenton. It's just surprised to see them 0-2 knowing their history and obviously undergoing some changes. But, you know, and uh, they're tough opponents, yeah. but well, still surprising say, to see I would them. say the way Kenton battled Wapakoneta on Saturday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, probably shows a lot of people that this Kenton team, they're still the Kenton Wildcats of old. They may be 0-2, but they're a pretty good 0-2 team. Matt, you weren't around in 2002 when they started 0-2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the they table. lost to Coldwater. They lost to Bath. They ran the table. Eight now. Yeah, and then and won a title. Yeah. And they Continued won the state on. championship okay. with Ben Mock as the I'm quarterback. I'm not counting them out at all. <laughs> just, <laughs> no. just surprising, especially. Do you know, not jump that. off the wagon, yeah. Kenton fans. Everything is okay. You will be fine. You're going to go through some growing pains this year when you have a new coach come in. Even though he's been there forever, he still wants to have his own little imprint on the program. Coach Fackler's going to do that. They're not going to change a whole bunch of things. But give it time. Everything is going to be okay. Which leads us to the Western Buckeye League. Kenton travels to St. Mary's this week. Do we even know anything about the Western Buckeye League through two weeks of the season? I, I think a lot of our preseason impressions are still holding true that it's still a wide open league. Yeah, I think they're 500 as a league, 10 yep. and 10. I think that's correct. And well, three, no, they were they were four and six the first week, so, so they're, they're nine under and 11. 500. Nine but and 11. Okay. I, I tell you what really impressed me was uh, Wapakoneta with three minutes and change and mm -hmm. one timeout, drives mm -hmm. down the field and scores a game-winning touchdown, throwing the football mm -hmm. against Kenton. Now that's probably got to scare the WBL because that's not what you think about when you think about Wapakoneta football, whether it was Doug Fry or now Travis Moyer. Uh, Cody Morgan leading them down the field was very impressive. And I think what you guys are saying is well-founded. Kenton is a very good football team uh, despite the 0-2 record. I think even though there's a lot to be played out, you'd have to say Wapakoneta would appear to be the front runner. I think we might get a better idea with Salon and OG squaring off this weekend. Yeah, much better. That's going to be rock'em sock'em football. That's a matchup that, I if you are just a passive football fan, you head up to Ottawa, you make that trip up 65, and you go to that game. That will be an excellent football game that I think could very easily come down to the final possession of the game. Should be a very good one. We'll know more as we continue on through the season. That's going to do it on this edition of Press Row. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on WOSN.